Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual on First Post. Here are the top headlines from across the world. According to reports, no progress has been made at the new rounds of Gaza ceasefire talks in Cairo. A Hamas official reportedly said there was no change in Israel's position and therefore no headway could be made in the talks. Earlier, an Egyptian state-affiliated news channel said that all parties had agreed on the basic points under discussion. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has reiterated that Israel will go forward with a large-scale invasion of Rafah. In a new video, Netanyahu insisted that the offensive will happen and a date for it is set already. However, he stopped short of revealing the date. Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid was in Washington on Monday. During the visit, he met with U.S. State Secretary Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Following the meeting, Lapid said that their conversation focused on the need to work on a solution in Gaza. Meanwhile, Iran's foreign minister visited Syria and inaugurated a new site for Iranian consular services in the capital city of Damascus. Earlier in the day, he also visited the damaged site where the previous consulate was flattened. Iran has blamed Israel for the attack on its embassy compound on April 1st. In Italy, police have arrested a man from Tajikistan suspected of terrorism. He is suspected of being an active member of the Islamic State. The man has been described as a fugitive in an international arrest warrant. However, the police did not say which country had issued the warrant against him. In the Philippines, dozens of activists marched towards the Chinese consulate in the capital city of Manila. The protesters condemned China's recent aggression in the disputed waters of the South China Sea. Footage showed people trampling on an effigy of Chinese President Xi Jinping. The activists demanded that Beijing stop its maritime aggression towards Filipino fishermen. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is in the United States. This is the first state visit by a Japanese leader in nine years. Prime Minister Kishida and the Japanese First Lady will stop by the White House today. But an official summit and a formal state dinner with US President Joe Biden will take place on Wednesday. On Thursday, the Japanese Prime Minister will also address a joint session of the Congress. Kishida and Biden are also set to hold a trilateral summit with the Philippines President and Ferdinand Marcos Jr. U.S. President Joe Biden has announced plans to ease student loans. This is under a new plan which includes cancelling up to $20,000 of unpaid interest. White House says the move is expected to help more than 30 million borrowers. Meanwhile, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump took an unexpected stance on abortion laws. In a video message, Trump said that abortion laws should be determined by U.S. states. He did not back any national ban to prohibit abortions. Trump added that he supported exceptions for cases like rape or incest to protect the life of the mother. Ecuador's detained former Vice President Jorge Glass has been taken to a hospital. This was after he fell ill at a prison in Guayaquil City. Last week, Glass was arrested after a raid by the police on the Mexican embassy in Quito. The raid had led to the suspension of diplomatic relations between the two countries. In Mexico, student protesters set a government building in vehicles on fire on Monday. The protests came amid anger over the death of a fellow student. They were also demanding answers in the case of a disappearance of 43 students in 2014. A group of activists sprayed red paint on the headquarters of Britain's Labour Party.
They were demanding the party's support on an arms embargo on Israel and an end to new oil and gas drilling projects. The protest was staged by Youth's Demand, which is an offshoot group of the British environmental group Just Stop Oil. The European Court of Human Rights will decide today if insufficient government action on climate change violates human rights. A 17-judge panel in France will rule on three lawsuits in which six Portuguese residents have sued 32 European Union countries for failing to prevent climate change. Thousands of elderly Swiss women claim that governments' inadequate efforts have put their life in danger. And in the third case, a former mayor of France has challenged the government's refusal to take more ambitious climate measures. The world experienced its warmest March on record. This is according to the European Climate Change Monitoring Committee. The committee added that the planet is setting a new temperature record in every 10 months. The time before March was also the planet's hottest ever recorded 12-month period. According to research by non-profit knowledge groups, dozens of international firms like H&M and Toyota are failing to cut down their greenhouse gas emissions. The research says they are failing to reduce the emission at the pace that is required and that the brands are also inflating their sustainability claims. Russia has been hit by some of the worst floods in decades. Water triggered by melting snow has flooded parts of the Ural Mountains, Siberia and even neighbouring Kazakhstan. At least 10,000 people were forced to flee their houses. The Ural River swelled several metres in just a few hours due to the melting ice. Dust plumes from the Sahara Desert is choking parts of Europe. This is according to the continent's climate monitor. The dust from the desert is leading to poor air quality and coating windows and cars in crime. The air quality in several locations exceeded the safe threshold set by the European Union. This is because of the shift in weather patterns. Colombia's capital city, Bogota, will start rationing water from this week. This comes after water in the region's reservoirs reached critically low levels. This happened because of the drought brought by climate change. The water rationing will affect close to 9 million people. Meanwhile, Colombia's environment minister said that deforestation in the Amazon region had declined. The deforestation had, has been forecast to have declined by 25 to 30 percent in 2023. The Amazon region in Colombia lo loses swathes of forest to deforestation annually. Southern Africa is struggling with the worst drought it has ever seen. Farmers are unable to grow crops as the land has been parched due to dry weather. Over 24 million people are facing hunger, malnutrition and water scarcity. The extreme weather situation is because of the El Nino weather phenomena. On to business and tech news, the Indian stock market indices broke all-time records today. The BSE Sensex rose around half a percent to cross the 75,000 mark for the first time. Meanwhile, the Nifty 50 of the NSC surpassed the 22,700 level. Early trade saw investors heavily buying IT stocks. This is the second straight session when the Indian stock markets have hit new highs. Electric car giant Tesla has settled a lawsuit over a 2018 fatal car crash. In 2018, an accident of Tesla's Model X car killed a 38-year-old engineer. It was alleged that the car was operating in autopilot mode when it crashed on a highway near San Francisco. The terms of the settlement have not been disclosed yet. Meanwhile, General Motors' self-driving car unit Cruise is reportedly planning to resume its operations in the U.S.
The firm is looking to start testing its self-driving cars in the U.S. city of Phoenix. Last year, Cruise suspended all its U.S. operations after an incident in San Francisco. The firm's driverless car dragged a pedestrian over 20 feet after she came into its path. The United Airlines has delayed its plans to start flights at two new international routes. The airline was planning to start flights between Japan and the Philippines and the U.S. and Portugal. The firm has now paused the plan, citing restrictions from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. Last month, the FAA increased its oversight of United Airlines over a number of recent incidents. U.S. investment firm Blackstone is reportedly near a deal to take over the French skincare firm L'Occitane. Blackstone plans to take the firm private after its acquisition. L'Occitane's shares are listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. This comes as the firm has been facing tough competitions from brands like L'Oreal and Estee Lauder. The U.S. has granted over $6.6 billion in subsidies for Taiwan's chipmaker TSMC. Subsidies will be used to expand the firm's production facility in the U.S. state of Arizona. TSMC is planning to invest around $65 billion in the state to set up three chip plants. The U.S. is reportedly set to announce subsidies for South Korean chipmaker Samsung. The firm is expected to receive over $6 billion to expand its plant in the state of Texas. Samsung is likely to announce over $44 billion in investment in the state. The U.S. is providing billions of dollars in subsidies for chipmakers to set up production facilities in the country. Japan's Shin Edsu Chemical has announced an investment of over $540 million. The firm will set up a factory in Japan's Gunma Prefecture. Shin Edsu manufactures chemicals and electronic materials for chip makers. The firm has said that the new factory will produce lithography materials that are essential for the chip making process. Casa Depositi e Prestiti, or CDP, the Italian state-owned bank, has announced an investment of over $1 billion. The investment will be used to fund the country's artificial intelligence firms in the next five years. This comes after Italy announced plans to set up a fund to promote the AI sector in the country. Tech giant Microsoft will set up a new artificial intelligence unit in London. The facility will work on the research and development of Microsoft's AI products such as Copilot. The unit will be led by Mustafa Suleiman, the former co-founder of AI firm DeepMind. Moving on to sports now, we start with cricket and the Indian Premier League. Chennai Super Kings beat Kolkata Knight Riders by seven wickets on Monday. Kolkata batted first and finished at an underwhelming 137 for nine. Chennai chased down the target with seven wickets and 14 balls to spare. Skipper Ruturaj Gaikwar smashed an unbeaten 67 to hand Kolkata their first defeat this season. Chennai all-rounder Ravindra Jadeja scripted a triple record during Sunday's IPL match. He is the first player to complete the Holy Trinity of 1,000 runs, 100 catches and 100 wickets. Jadeja achieved this feat with two catches and three wickets on the day. His 100th catch came when he dismissed Kolkata batter Shreyas Ayer. In football, Cristiano Ronaldo was handed a red card during the Saudi Super Cup semi-final. It was for elbowing an opponent when Al Nasser was taking on rivals Al Hilal. The incident happened when his club Al Nasser was down 2-0. The match ended with Al Nasser losing the match 1-2. German giants Bayern Munich are bracing for their Champions League clash against Arsenal. 
For Bayern, it will be yet another chance for redemption. Having been knocked out of the German Cup, their only chance of winning a title lies with the Champions League. Bayern have won all their previous four Champions League knockout stage matches against Arsenal. In tennis, Greece's Stefano Tsitsipas advanced to the second round of the Monte Carlo Masters. His opponent, Laszlo Ger of Serbia, retired with an injury during the second set on Monday. Tsitsipas was leading 6-3-3-2 when the incident occurred. Bulgarian Grigor Dimitrov also made it to the second round of the Monte Carlo Masters. He defeated wildcard Valentin Vashro 7-5-6-2 in straight sets yesterday. This will be Dimitrov's second title chase this year if he wins it. The victory improved his overall record to 21 wins to 5 losses. And India's Sumit Nagal created yet another record at the Monte Carlo Masters. He stunned 38-ranked Matteo Arnaldi 5-7-6-2-6-4 in the first round. The high-octane encounter lasted 2 hours and 37 minutes. With that, Nagal became the first ever Indian man to record a main draw win at the Monte Carlo Masters. The UK government hinted it is no longer against Russian and Belarusian athletes competing in the Paris Olympics. It was earlier opposed to the idea, but now it is open to dropping its opposition. They have officially written to the International Olympics Committee to convey their change in stance. The move comes after stricter neutrality rules were introduced last month. A French water charity raised alarms regarding pollution in the Seine River. This comes at a time when just over 100 days are remaining for the mega event to start. The Seine River is set to host marathon swimming events. The charity said they analysed six months of tests and had concluded the water is potentially dangerous. The Commonwealth Federation plans to announce its host for the 2026 Games next month. The body said it received quote-unquote multiple proposals to replace the Australian state of Victoria. Victoria withdrew its plan to host the event last year, citing high costs. The Commonwealth Federation said it is keeping the proposals confidential as of now. Some news from the world of entertainment, Jonathan Majors has been sentenced to a year of domestic violence counselling by the court. He has been ordered to continue his therapy and pay a surcharge of $250. He was convicted of assaulting and harassing his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari, last year. Jabari, after the sentencing, stated that Majors is not sorry for what he did and he will do it again. Singer Morgan Wallen has been arrested by the police in Nashville after he threw a chair off the rooftop of a six-storey bar which landed near two police officials. Wallen has been booked for reckless endangerment and disorderly conduct. He was later released from custody and has to appear in the court on 3rd of May. Singer Taylor Swift also unveiled a part of her upcoming album, The Tortured Poets Department, during the total solar eclipse. She took to Instagram to post the potential lyrics which stated, Crowd goes wild at her fingertips, half moonshine, full eclipse. The billionaire pop star's 11th studio album will release on 19th of April. Singer Billie Eilish has announced her third album titled Hit Me Hard and Soft. The album will release on 17th of May. She made the announcement via social media where she could be seen swimming towards a white door. Her album this time will not have any singles. Rapper Missy Elliott will soon hit the road with a first ever tour. Her tour titled Out of This World will start on 4th of July in Vancouver. She will then head to locations like Seattle, Los Angeles and Boston. Elliot will wrap the tour in the US state of Illinois. She called this an incredible time of her life. 
The premiere of upcoming film Back to Black took place in London. The film is based on the life of singer-songwriter Amy Winehouse. The event was attended by the lead actor Marissa Abella along with Jack O'Connell and Eddie Marson. Back to Black will hit theatres on 12th of April. Kevin Costner's western epic Horizon and American Saga has set a Cannes Film Festival premiere. The film will be shown to the committee out of the competition. It is a four-part project which stars Sienna Miller, Sam Worthington and Jenna Malone. The story follows the construction and expansion of the United States of America. Horizon and America and Saga will release on the 28th of June. The trailer of the upcoming film Fly Me to the Moon has been released. The film stars Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum are in lead roles. The story follows the love of Johansson and Tatum who are working on a moon landing project. The lunar love story will hit the theatres on July 12th. Robert Downey Jr. does not mind putting on the Iron Man jersey again. He stated in an interview that the character of Tony Stark is an integral part of his DNA. The character of Iron Man ended with him sacrificing his life to save the planet from Thanos. Downey also revealed that the Avengers co-stars are a tightly knit group as they worked over, for over a decade together. Actors Spike Lee, Paul Meskel and Olivia Colman have donated items for the Cinema of Gaza auction. Lee submitted a Malcolm X signed poster along with After Sun by Meskel. Colman donated a customized video message. The auction has been set up by a UK-based filmmakers and journalists. The fundraiser has also so far collected over $100,000. The proceedings will be given to the medical aid for Palestinians. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issue, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.